Richie Owens here from serifymeldrum.com with a quick reminder that if you are a full subscriber to level one or level two, then office hours for the August sitting have kicked in for level one, are about to kick in for level two. So if you go to left-hand side here to live sessions on the site, office hours, you'll get all the dates. We've had one so far for level one, a little bit of quant, a little bit of ribs. Uh, we're going again July the 12th, Saturday afternoon. And uh, next week is when level two, so level two will kick in. Uh, July 16th, we'll start off with some quant. All times here are uh, Eastern. But uh, as well as that reminder, just wanted to go into just a, a bit of a guide on how to review. I don't want to just come here and tell you what you've been told a million times already and say, oh, when you review, you should do questions, you should do mocks, uh, keep practicing. I know you know that. It's kind of patronizing just to tell you that. So I thought I'd just do a little demo from our site. And given we had a quantitative methods office hours at level one this week, and given it came up, I thought I'd use Bayes' theorem. Now, this is a question from our QBank. Look up here. I've not given you the three choices because I wanted to show the answer version because I wanted you to see the percentage that got it right. But um, the answer is highlighted, so I've hidden those. makes it a bit trickier. But look at this. 65% got this right. That's a pretty healthy percentage. Why? Because it is an absolutely down-the-middle kind of expected question on Bayes. And everything you need is absolutely flagged to you. They say, look, at T0, the probability that Barry Kissinger, I don't really need to use Kissinger anywhere, is it? but there you go, is approved for a loan by Logan Bank is 0.7. So we've got the probability approved is 0.7. They're telling you it's T0. It's obvious that that's first. If he's approved for the loan, the probability that he starts his own business at T1 is 0.95. So they're setting that in the future. Dead easy to realize what's going on here. The probability that he starts his own business, I'll just call it ST, given he is approved. Given he's approved is 0.95. So we have that probability conditional. If he's not approved, the probability he starts his own business. So starts his own business, not approved is 0.7. Uh, what have we got here? Barry starts his own business. Which of the following is closest to the probability that he was approved? So we want the probability he was approved given he starts his own business. That is the question. You can see they've swapped it around. Classic Bayes. Now, what might leap into your head here is the disgusting looking formula, which I don't think is that helpful. The event I'm looking for given new information. That's what Bayes is about, given new information. Well, it's the probability of the information given the event, probability of the event, probability of the information. I don't think that helps at all. And in fact, I'm going nowhere near that in the exam, I'm drawing a tree. And this is where I start. These are conditional, I can't start a tree there. This is the root, so I start there. Approved, 0.7. It's gonna be 0.3 down here, not approved, but we don't really need that. Uh, if he's approved, probability starts his business given he is approved is 0.95, so this is going to be 0 0.05, don't need that, and starts his business given he's not approved, so starts given not approved, down here is 0.7, uh, that would be 0.3, again, don't need it. Probability he's approved given he started his own business, so given he started his own business means we are either here or we are here. So what we need to do is work out these joint probabilities Work out the probability of both of those outcomes when he started his own business. This one is 0.7 times 0.95. That is 0.665. This one is 0.3 times 0.7. That is 0.21. So start here. The information we've got is that the business was started. So we are either here or here. Add them together. That's your denominator. Given it started means we're in one of these two, which means 0.875. We want the probability he was approved. Probability he was approved? Well, this is our universe. We can only be in one of these two. That's what we're restricted to. We don't care about these. Which one of those two boxes was he approved? Well, not down here. He was approved up here, only in this box. So 0 0.665, 0 0.665 over 0 0.875, 76%. 76% 76 
65% of you got 76%. Healthy percentage, as I say, because it goes from T0 to T1. Every probability as you need it is given to you in order. Very linear. If you've just learned the formula and you think, ah, that's the information I need, you're going to get that question right. 35% who got it wrong didn't know the formula, didn't know Bayes. Now compare that to this. 26%. And this is the point I'm making. I didn't want to come on and say, oh, do questions. It's helpful. You know that. The reason it's helpful is because you will see a range. If you simply look at the walkthroughs in the book, you simply try one question, then walk away. It might be that you try the Barry Kissinger question and say, yep, I know Bayes' theorem. But you've got to test to see if you can work out what's going on when you get the information in a slightly different, a more unexpected way. So what have we got here? Uh, we've got Green Ecosystems GEI and Bristol Environmental Core. BEC have earnings reports coming out next week. So nothing's happened yet. This table, uh, this one, summarizes an analyst's estimate of the probabilities concerning whether the companies will surpass their earnings expectations or not. Okay, and we can see equals exceeds fall short. What do we need? The probability that BEC's earnings fall short. So we need the probability that BEC fall short. I'll just do as a cross. So I'm saying fall short is a cross equals or exceeds is a tick. Probability that BEC's earnings fall short given that GEI's also fall short. Off you go. Well, once again, what probably lands in your head if you like to learn things this way is, well, I've got an event given some new info. I need probability of info given event, probability of event, probability of info. Huh. Because you then look at this table and say, well, I don't really have any conditional probabilities. It's not like the Kissinger question where you were just gifted everything you needed. And at this point, a lot of people give up, guess, move on, or just start trying any random combinations of these four numbers that they can. Don't. This is why you should practice questions. Now you've seen something in a slightly different manner. This is where it's fun. All right. Let's do a tree again. I, I know I don't know how to fill the tree in, but what do I need? BEC falling short given GEI fell short. Well, given GEI fell short, let's put that first. So GEI was okay. GEI fell short. We can then put in BEC was okay, fell short. BEC was okay and fell short. That's what my tree would look like. I know I've got nothing to fill in. I've got none of these conditional probabilities that I need. But what I do have is all of the joint probabilities. And remember, when we did the Kissinger question, all we used were the joint probabilities. So this is actually pretty straightforward because we have every joint probability here. I shouldn't do ticks because I'll then confuse with my probabilities. We have every joint probability. So let's have a look. Both of the most successful probability, a joint probability is 0 0.1. So it's not the conditional, but it is the joint here. We have GEI exceeding and BEC falling short is 0 0.2. It's exceeding falling short. This is 0.2. We have GEI falling short and BEC succeeding, fall short succeed. That is 0.3 and both failing is 0.4. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That all adds up to 1. It makes sense. So if I use my logic from earlier, I can do this just using joint probabilities. It's a gift. Given GEI did not meet earnings. Given GEI did not meet earnings means we're in this leg here. So our universe is these two. Given we didn't meet earnings means I must be in one of these two boxes because both of these GEI met earnings. So your denominator saying what's already happened is 0.7. On the top, the probability that BEC does not meet earnings. Well, out of these two boxes, which one has BEC not meeting earnings? Uh, well, that one it did. This one is where it didn't meet earnings. So it's 0.4 which would give me 57%, 57.14 to be accurate. That is the correct answer that only 26% of people got to. 
And that's because I think you're looking in here and saying, oh, well, this is clearly an error. We need a conditional probability. Well, no. Actually, if you look at what this formula is, on the top line, what is the probability of information given event, probability of event? That is the probability of both the information and the event happening. That top line is a joint probability. It's just that most questions that are asking you to multiply two together to get there, here, instead of doing that, they just gifted it to you. So we know it already. Down here, the probability of the information, that is just these two joint probabilities together. Every single possible outcome where that was true. So a good example of practicing questions and seeing the information presented to you in all sorts of different ways. The more questions you can see, the better chance you have of seeing every conceivable way that this could come up. So practice, practice. Take a look at the tab for the office hours if you are a full subscriber. They're running over the next few weeks in the run-up to that August window.